up my reseller friends my name is sabrina i thrift to resell on ebay and a little bit of posh and macari in this video i'm going to show you some of my recent what sold and i also want to talk to you about something different that i've been doing every morning that i think may have helped increase my sales a bit so let's just go ahead and jump right into it so i have been selling for over three years on ebay and i have recently transitioned into doing this full time and in the beginning of December, I noticed that my sales were really low, like way lower than they should have been considering that I was doing it full time. And it was very depressing. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. Uh, but I knew that it was something that I was doing and it was something that I needed to change. One of the things that I did do was I did purchase a bunch of video games and I really think that helped my store a lot because a lot of the video games were games that people actually wanted. So I was getting a lot of traffic in my store and if you're getting traffic, um, that's going to increase your impressions and when your impressions increase, eBay automatically increases you in the algorithm. So that was one thing. But something else that I started doing too that I really noticed really made a huge difference is I came up with a morning routine. And this routine is my way of waking up my eBay store. I always remembered, I watched a video from Empty Hanger, is that her name? Um, I forget because she doesn't do YouTube anymore. I think it's Empty Hanger. Um, she posted a video that she showed her routine because she is a full-time reseller, but she would mostly sell on um, Poshmark. But she would say that every morning, the first thing she would do is share her entire closet. And that was her way of waking up her store. Now, I'm not too much of a posh girl myself, but I'm definitely an eBay girl. and. That always stuck with me and I thought, okay, what is it that I need to do every morning to wake up my eBay store? So like, I wanna wake it up, I wanna feed it breakfast and give it vitamins, that way it's healthy and it's gonna work really hard all day and make me lots of money. So normally the first thing I do is something that I could do in bed before I even get up. And that is I just go through and send as many offers as I can. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing I do is I go through and I pick out between five to 10 of my stale items and I, I end them all. So then I hit sell a similar, but then I don't just relist the same listing. Like I go through and update them. Um, sometimes I'll change the title, I'll change the price, maybe switch up the pictures. Um, add more um, item specs, just whatever it is that I think that I could do to spice up that listing to get people to look at it again. And then I will relist it. I go through and I look at ended or unsold listings and then I'll go and I'll completely delete those ones that I ended. That way they're just gone and all that's in their system is this new fresh listing. And I have been selling a lot of my old stuff by doing that. And then the next thing that I do is my shipping for the day. So I make sure that those three things are the first things that I do. And that's my way of waking up my eBay store and just letting eBay know, hey, we're up, I'm working, um, I'm ready to get some sales. It's been working. And the reason why I really feel like it's working is because there is one day that I didn't do it. And that one day, my sales were really low. So I don't know if it was just a coincidence or maybe eBay saw that I wasn't sticking to my routine and eBay really likes routine. I don't know. But what I do know is that that one day, my sales were down. And I'm definitely not telling you that this is gonna work for you. Um, everybody has different things that work for them, just depending on their particular eBay store. Um, so if whatever you're doing is working great for you, don't change it up to do what I'm doing. But if you feel like your sales are down and you feel like you do want to change something up, I say give it a try, see if it works. So now I'm just gonna jump in and show you some of my what solds from the week.
First off is this Raiders toddler t-shirt. It's sold for $10, free shipping. I picked this up at a thrift store. I paid a dollar for it. Now, of all the sports teams, the Raiders do the best for me. Raiders always sell, um, especially if you can find vintage. Oh, my gosh. I recently sold a Raiders vintage, like, baby one piece. I think that one sold for, like, over $20. Um, I've seen other resellers where they find, like, the vintage Raiders jacket those are gold mines um so always be very open when it comes to raider stuff um especially if they're nice um i think if they're worn in or if they look like they're kind of just like generic i would leave them behind um but this sold very quickly i only had it listed for a couple days and someone bought it oh let me know in the comments if there's any sports teams that always sell good for you. It doesn't have to be football. It could be any sports teams. Um, for me, after Raiders would be the Dodgers. Um, but I would just love to hear from you and what works for you. Please let me know. Next is this Tinkerbell dress from the Disney store. Um, this is one of Tinkerbell's friends. I did buy this at a thrift store for about $5. Um, I bought it like a couple days before Halloween. So I was like, oh, I'm not sure if I should pick this up because Halloween's almost over. And like, even if someone bought it today, I still don't think they would get it in time. However, I did remind myself that children's costumes sell all year long. And I'm going to tell you why, especially Disney, because Parents like to dress their kids up in Disney costumes when they take them to the Disney parks. And then also birthday parties. Like kids have costume parties all year long. If someone's going to throw a Tinkerbell birthday party for their daughter in August, they may very well also be looking for some sort of Tinkerbell costume for the kid to wear. And it's not like they can just go to the spirit store because there's no spirit store yet. Actually, now that I think about it, August was a bad example. <laughs> let's use like May because I think that the spirit store is open in August. So let's just say like May. Um, so these costumes actually sell all year long. And I would always recommend picking up these Disney store or Disney parks um, costumes for kids when you see them. Next is this pink top. It sold for about $12. Um, I bought this at a yard sale for a dollar and I still pick up pink, even though it's um, very saturated pinks everywhere. Even when I go out thrifting and stuff, I see pink stuff all over the place. Um, but if you can get it for really cheap, it's still like a consistent seller. And I'm showing you this because I almost didn't list it because I didn't think that anybody would buy it. But it did come in a, one of those, um, those like grab bags or junk bags. I don't know if you call them the ones you get from like Savers or Goodwill, but this one came from Savers. Um, it was like a bag that had a bunch of toys in it. And this was one of the ones that I was like, eh, I'm not sure if this one will sell, but of course, I always just end up like posting things anyways. Um, so I just threw it on eBay for $10 and someone bought it and it actually sold in a couple days. So whenever in doubt, just list it. Next is this um, set of Raggedy Ann things. I did buy another one of those grab bags um, from a thrift store. I paid $3 for it. It came with a couple of other Christmas things that I listed as well. Um, but this one sold for $15. <clears throat> I noticed that both of these items weren't really worth so much um, separately, but it was worth listing them together. Next is this Mickey and Minnie wedding cake topper porcelain thing. Um, sometimes I wish that I could just get married again so that I could have a Disney wedding. Uh, fun fact about me, though, is I actually had a Nightmare Before Christmas themed wedding because I'm a hardcore Nightmare Before Christmas fan, and my husband also loves Nightmare Before Christmas. And um, we say that we're Jack and Sally, and that's actually the name of my um, my eBay store. It's called Living Like Jack and Sally, and my username is like X Jack Sally X 
Jack X Sally X or whatever, something like that. Um, and we had like Jack and Sally as our cake topper. It wasn't like super like dark Halloween looking. It was actually a really beautiful wedding and um, it was very colorful, but we just kind of threw the nightmare before Christmas um, into it, but like in a fun, colorful summer way, if that makes any sense. So it wasn't like Halloween ish. It wasn't Christmas ish. It was in the middle of summer and it was like, my wedding was beautiful with like flowers and pinks and blues and then Jack and Sally. <laughs> but anyways, um, the person who bought this, I actually had it listed for $20 plus shipping. Someone sent me an offer for 15 and she said in the message, now normally I don't like it when people send me messages, um, when they send offers, but this one didn't bother me. She said that, um, her sister had this exact, um, item and she it was her cake topper for her wedding but it broke and her sister was really sad about it so she wanted to buy this for her sister as a christmas gift and i was just like okay you can have it <laughs> you you touched my heart <laughs> so um i accepted the offer i was kind of trying to get closer to the 20 dollars price range but i'm a sucker i know um but this did have damage on it too um, you could see here on Mickey Mouse, he has some chip paint. And I don't know what was going on at the bottom, but that, like, didn't come off. It's, like, stuck to it. So I don't know if, like, some of the um, porcelain, like, got hot or something. And it, I, I don't know what it is. Weird. But $15 plus shipping was fine with me. Next is this goofy hat. Um, I found this at a yard sale. I think I paid a dollar for it. But um, when we were kids and we would go to Disney, my brother actually had this exact goofy hat and he would wear it to the parks. And he would always, I always thought it was, it was funny because it was like, a, like, it's a big hat, like it's really tall. And I always thought it was pretty funny and kind of, kind of cool that he wore that hat. And it's reminded me of my brother. And I was like, oh, I remember when my brother used to wear that hat to the parks because he bought it one year. And then like the next couple of years that we went, uh, he would continue to bring it with him and wear it. <laughs> He's just, um, it was a lot of fun. It was a good memory. And um, I bought it, wasn't sure if it was going to sell or if it was worth anything, but it actually sold for $22. Again, we've got Raiders. I picked this up at a yard sale for 50 cents. Like I remember it, we were at a um, community yard sale and let me tell you guys, for anyone who's been following my channel, you know that I lived in Colorado and I started my reselling journey in Colorado and then I recently moved back to California. And one of the things, there, there's pros and cons I know for reselling, like for the different states that you live in or different areas, like there's pros and cons to everything. And one of the biggest pros for me living in California is that it is literally like mid-December and I am still out there going to yard sales and I love it. Versus when I lived in Colorado, it would only be for like a short couple months of the year. Um, but now I have them like all year long. Like this community yard sale was only a couple weeks ago. So I just love that. I'll never get tired of that. I just... I love yard sales. It's my favorite way to source. I will choose yard sales over thrift stores any day. I find the best stuff for the best deals. Um, but um, we were at a community sale and we drove past this house and they didn't have very much out. Like literally it was like one table and like two little boxes and I wasn't even going to get down. And then I asked my husband, Amal, do you think I should just go look real quick? And he's like, yeah, we're, we're here. Let's just go look and see what's in those boxes. And she, in one of the boxes had some clothes in it. And I just, whatever I start looking at clothes, I always ask them first, like, like how much are you asking for your clothes? Because if it seems like sometimes they'll be like, oh, they range anywhere between like one to $10 or, or they'll be like, oh yeah, $3. If they say something high like that, then I know that I'm wasting my time looking at their stuff and that I should just move on to the next sale. 
Um, so I asked her how much for your clothes and she said 50 cents a piece. And I'm like, heck yeah. So then I'm like, I'll go through this box and I'll pick out anything that I even think might be good. Like I don't even care about looking for flaws and stuff. I'm just going to grab whatever I see and just hope for the best. <laughs> if it's 50 cents a piece guys, I mean, come on. And this was in there like literally 50 cents for this. And I bought it and I knew that this was real because my husband actually has the same exact Jersey. <laughs> Funny, huh? Um, different size, but same jersey. So I knew it was real. I don't like buying jerseys. Um, like if they're going to be a lot, if the jerseys cost a lot, I normally skip through them because I don't know how to tell if one is fake or not. But if, if I'm with my husband, he normally can tell and he'll let me know. But if I'm not with him, I'll like to skip through. But if it's 50 cents, I mean, come on. So yeah, I grabbed this and um, it got a lot of attention. I cross posted it on, you know, Mercari and Posh and it was getting offers and attention and it sold for $30 um, plus shipping. But this is also a double X and those size jerseys sell really well. Next is a replacement dress for a Milan doll. This sold for $10. I mean, I don't even think I could sell a Milan doll for 10 bucks. But yet, her dress sells for 10 bucks. I, I don't have anything else to say about that. <laughs> Next are um, this set of books. These sold for $30 for the three. And... I don't know much about books. I actually, I like selling books. I really do because I really like selling media, but I'm scared of books because I feel like there's such hit or miss. Like it seems like with books, it's either like this was a great pickup or it was either this was a horrible pickup. It's really rare that it's in between. And, um, but most of the time it's bad pickups. But whenever I'm out and I see that the books are really cheap and I see that there's like a bunch of the same like series of books, I always pick them up. And I never heard of this series before, the, these warriors, and they're about like cats. <laughs> people love, I know that people love cats. So I went for it and I bought all of them um, and, I, and I divided them up into two different um, bundles and this was one of them this sold for $30 plus the cost of shipping and then the other bundle that I made sold on Mercari and that one sold for $40 free shipping and I think that she charged me a quarter per book at this yard sale so this ended up being a great pickup and now that's pretty much my rule of thumb when it comes to books like if I'm in a situation where I don't feel comfortable looking up comps or either I don't want to look up comps because I'm going to be honest guys sometimes when I'm out thrifting like everyone says look up comps look up comps dude it's so annoying to be looking up comps all the time like literally I hate doing it so sometimes I'm just like eh, I don't care I'm just buying it because I just don't want to look it up it's I don't know it's something I struggle with I think I need to work on I need to look up comps more and I oh, yeah Anyways, um, my new rule of thumb is just if they're cheap and there's a bunch of these books from the same series, just grab them. This doll, I got her at a yard sale. At the most, it was a dollar. It could have been less. I, I bought a bunch of stuff at that yard sale. And um, I think I like everything I bought was like came out to like $5 or something like that. So I don't know. She was cheap. And um, this is actually, a lot of the newer Barbies don't sell good. Um, so I'm very, very picky when it comes to new Barbies that I, that I buy. But there was just something about this doll that just my gut told me that she was going to be a great pickup. And not only that, she was pretty cheap too. Um, but um, she is like the I could do anything um, like line of Barbie dolls. So this is like a pilot. Uh, but I just absolutely loved that um, she was a doll of color and she's female and she's a pilot. Like I just loved everything about it. I love this doll. 
and um, somebody else really loved it too because they paid twenty dollars uh, free shipping for her. Um, I did get a bag. I bought it from an auction. Um, it had a bunch of Disney things on it, and it did have a lanyard that had a bunch of Disney pins. Um, these were two of them. These are Marvel Kuwahi art mystery pins, and um, this is. Um, characters from Guardians of the Galaxy. So I bundled these together for $14.99. It sold probably in less than 24 hours. So this one sold very quickly. Um, I do recommend buying Disney pins. They sell great. Um, they get a lot of attention. Um, however, you must know that a lot of Disney pins are fake. There's a lot of counterfeits out there. So you gotta be very cautious of that. Uh, I have done my research online to find out like what are signs to look for for counterfeits with pins. And um, I've, I think it's kind of easy to tell in my opinion, uh, but it's just definitely something that you should be aware of. You definitely don't want to get any strikes or have any problems on your account for selling anything counterfeit. I definitely don't, which is why I don't like, I rarely even look at purses because I'm just, I, I don't want to sell counterfeit because I just don't know enough. Um, but maybe one day I will take the time um, to do some research and learn that a little bit better. And this also came from the same um, pin set that I got. Um, these I bundled these two together. I knew that the bigger button was worth more and the smaller one wasn't really worth much. Um, so I just put the smaller one with the bigger one to help that this sell better. Um, so yeah, I had it listed for $40. So this is the thing. There was only one other person selling this on eBay. And I'm talking about the bigger one. There was only one. And they were trying to sell it for $40. And then when I looked at sold comps, there was none. So I really didn't know what it was going to be worth. So I just listed it for the same price as the other person. I put $40 of best offer. And then someone came through and offered me 30 and I'm like, you know what? I don't know if I'll get this $30 offer again. Maybe someone will pay the full $40 maybe, but maybe they won't. I don't know. And because of the fact that I just listed this, like I hadn't even cross posted it onto Macari yet. I just listed it and I was just like, no, it is great for your eBay store to get fast sales like this. I'm going to accept this offer and be happy with it. And I did and I was happy with it. And I hope that the person who bought this is going to be happy with it as well. This is another one that came from one of those grab bags from Savers. It probably was from the same bag that had that Shrek toy in it. And I wasn't going to list it, but I did. I listed it for $6.99 and it sold very quickly within about 24 hours. This is not a lot of money, my friends. This is $7. It cost me $3 and something to ship it eBay charges your fees, you've got taxes, your time to list it, but you know what? It helps my eBay store do good and it helps me to sell um, other items too. And it keeps my cash flow going and it was so fast and easy to list it. I think I hit like a sell similar from somebody else. It probably took me like, I don't know, like a minute to do everything as far as taking the pictures and making the listing and whatnot. Next is this vintage wind-up um, monkey toy. These wind-up toys do really well. Um, so if you have any of these vintage ones, um, definitely get them listed. Um, be on the lookout for them too as well. Um, this sold for $14 free shipping, which was great. I think it came from the same grab bag toy as the Woody and the Shrek. So with this, I had actually listed this set during the summer. I was still living in Colorado at the time when I listed it. And I thought that this one was going to sell fast and it never sold. So like I had told you at the beginning of this video that I've been going through and I've been looking through some of my stale inventory and just kind of readjusting things a bit. Um, I came upon this one and... I was just thinking, yeah, this definitely should have sold. So there's something wrong with my listing. 
And sure enough, I checked the comps and I have it listed too high. I had this for $30 free shipping, but when I went and looked, there was a lot of them that were selling for $25. So I adjusted my price to $25 and then after that it sold in like a day or two. It sold really fast and actually the person who bought it got it super fast and left me great feedback. They said that they received this the day after I sh they bought it. So I don't know. It's it's crazy because this got shipped media mail. I don't know how the heck they got it so quickly, um, but maybe maybe they lived in California. I'm not sure, but um, yes, I I was just really glad that I went back and reevaluated this because twenty five dollars is great. It's a, that's a great sale. Thank you so much for sticking around and watching this video. I hope you found it useful in any way at all. I hope everybody is having an amazing quarter four. Quarter four is almost over, my friends. So let's make the best of it. And never forget, when you thrift upon a star, your dreams will come true. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.